In this session, I'm going to show you how to master large-scale color correction using the various tools at your disposal in the Adobe Camera Raw interface. Let's jump right in. If you'll go to the Session 15 folder, you'll find the image of the rock climber here. And I want to open this into Adobe Camera Raw. In the last session, I showed you that you could highlight your image in the content window and click on this icon to open in Adobe Camera Raw. Let me show you one other way to open the image into Adobe Camera Raw. That is to right click the image and scroll down to Open in Camera Raw. Left click and that sends it to the same place. So whichever way you feel more comfortable with, that's the way I would open images into Camera Raw from now on. Now in this image, we have a good image but it's off color. It's very blue and I see a little bit of magentas coming in to the shadow area on the rock climber's shirt. Fortunately, Camera Raw gives us a very powerful and easy to use tool to globally correct color shifts like the one you see on your screen right now. This tool is called the White Balance Tool and it looks like a turkey baster located here in the upper left hand corner of the Camera Raw interface. I'm going to select this tool and the way the white balance tool works is I need to identify a portion of my image that should either be a neutral white, a neutral gray, or a neutral black. And when I say neutral, it should have no color cast one way or the other. When I click on that part of the image with the white balance tool, Photoshop is going to make a bunch of calculations for me that's going to white balance the entire image based on the calculation of the sample point that I click on with the tip of my turkey baster. In this case, I know that the rock down here in the lower left hand corner of the frame is close to a neutral gray. So I'm going to position my white balance tool over that rock and click and release. And you'll see that instantly that blue color cast I was experiencing in my frame is gone and I have a beautifully color balanced image. But just for fun, let me show you how the white balance can change as I click on different parts of the image. What if I were to have clicked down here on this part of the image? I get a slightly different color cast. It actually goes a little more towards the blue. That means that this part of the rock was not a truly neutral shade. Let's try clicking on the black of the rock climber shorts. When I click on that, you'll see that everything goes a little too yellow. So using this white balance tool, you really do need to experiment by clicking around on some different areas of your frame to find the neutral area to get the color balance that you desire. Some good tips and tricks to know. If you can see the whites of someone's eyes, you can zoom in on the eyes using the command plus or command minus and actually click on the whites of someone's eyes. That's a good place to click white balance. Another place that's great to click white balance is someone's teeth. Many times people wearing button down shirts, the buttons are white buttons. Or if it's an urban scene, asphalt and concrete are very good neutral areas to do a click white balance on. Now the camera raw interface does give us an area to fine tune this white balance. So if I have made a click white balance and I feel that it needs further fine tuning, I can go over to the basic panel here and play with the temperature and the tint sliders. In this case, if I wanted to add a little more yellow to the frame, I could easily do that by grabbing my scrubby slider, clicking and holding, and just pulling that to the right. And that's going to warm that scene up. And if I felt that the trees needed to be a little more green, I could grab the tint slider on the scrubby slider, click and hold, and drag that to the left, and that's going to bring a little more green into the frame. Now I'm feeling really good about the white balance of my image. So there's almost innumerable combinations of white balance that you can do with your temperature and your tint slider. One other thing to be aware of is there is preset white balances from this custom drop down menu up top in your basic panel. And if you click on this, you can go to Auto, where 
the computer will take its best guess of the white balance, or you could go to as shot, which was how the white balance was brought into the computer. And if this is a camera raw file versus a JPEG file, you'll have about six or seven other options in this drop down list. You could white balance to daylight, you could white balance to cloudy, you could white balance to shade, all of the different settings that we talked about early on in the lessons. Since I've set this back to white balance as shot, I'm going to try to set this to auto and see how it does. And it actually does a pretty good job. It warms up the rock nicely. I'm going to fine tune that by grabbing my scrubby slider and adding a little more warmth to the scene. This is sort of the equivalent of adding an 81B warming filter with this slider right here. And I'm going to add a little more green to my scene by grabbing the scrubby slider and moving the tint towards the green side. That looks great. So why do they give us a blue yellow slider and a green magenta slider? The blue yellow slider is pretty obvious. That is the equivalent of daylight or tungsten balance film and it's the equivalent of adding warming filters or cooling filters to your camera to warm up the scene or to cool the scene down. The green magenta slider is a little bit more of a mystery but there are a couple very good reasons why that slider is there. If you find yourself shooting under fluorescent lighting situations, many times you'll get a green cast overall in the scene. And you can eliminate this overall green cast by moving that tint slider to the right to add magenta overall to your scene to get a nice neutral light balance. The other reason that there is this green magenta slider is that many of the lenses we're using on our cameras today have anti-reflective coatings on them. These anti-reflective coatings, if you hold them up to an incident angle at the sky, you'll see they have either a green or magenta sheen to them. That's the nature of anti-reflective coatings on lenses. Digital camera sensors can actually pick up this slight bit of green or this slight bit of magenta from these AR coated lenses and that will get imparted onto the digital file in your camera. So this is another way that we can cancel out any color shifts imparted from the lens that we're using on the camera with the tint slider. Now that you see how easy it is to master large-scale color correction in your image, in the next session I'll show you an equally easy method to correct a crooked horizon line on your image, as well as introduce you to the idea of free versus constrained cropping.